Larry, do you hear bagpipes in the background? Yeah. You hear bagpipes. Oh, this is so cool. So, hey, hello everyone. This is David at Finish Line Factory. We're here today at Wheels Across the Pond. This is huge, huge British car show, and this is the largest it's ever been. Uh, they have 470 cars registered, and I've already walked through like the first part here, and there's like a lot of cool stuff. So we're gonna keep walking. We're gonna find some new stuff. Just finished a uh, uh, just finished a rally with Miguel. Going on. Hello. We just did the uh, Fast Life rally. We rallied from Pompano Beach. We all met from Pompano Beach and just drove here. So, all right, let's uh, go check out some stuff and have some fun. All right, so it's a primarily British car show, but they got a few. I guess now it's more of a European car show. So right here they have this beautiful Lamborghini Diablo VT. Oh yeah, gated manual transmission. All right, what do we got around here? We got some MGs. We got a got a rack. MG and a lot of MGs here. You know what, usually when you see an MG at a car show or something, it might be like one or two car shows. I mean, one or two MGs. But to see so many MGs and Triumphs and look at all this. There are so many cars here. I don't even know there were this many MGs in Florida. You know, and look at it. Look at this, it's in pristine condition. It's like it's brand new or maybe even better than new. Maybe it's been repainted. And, I mean, I can see some, uh, some modern flake in there in the, in the paint. That's pretty nice. Oh yeah, I guess these must be some newer MGs. So they tried to preserve some of the older style in these cars. It's interesting. Oh damn, it's a V8. So I guess these are the same car. That one's got a little four cylinder. This has got a massive V8 shoehorned in it. Like, I think they put it in from the bottom because there's no way it's coming in from the top. I mean, look at the size of the opening relative to the body. Ah uh, yes, there we go. Here's the Land Rover section. I had a feeling that the the show was divided up into different sections. So here's like all the Jags, Aston Martins are in one place, uh, MGs are in one place. So I guess I was just walking through the MG section. But we can get to look at all these nice cars. Look at this. This is. These are so cool. They're these these like tough square bodies. This one looks a little uh, little customized or restored or something. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this. It's got a Momo steering wheel. What's going on in there? Very, very nice. There you go. Old Land Rover. Original radio. Very nice. Ordinarily, you'd see someone would have changed the radio or something, you know, something a little more modern to get modern features like Bluetooth and all that, but uh, I like the preservation of the originality. Oh yeah, look at this. Here's all the Jags. Here's all the XJs. So fun fact, the Jaguar XJ is kind of a fire hazard. The, um, the wiring in this day and age gets kind of old, and uh, there were certain fuel lines that crossed over the engine that made them prone to fires. Uh, so, wow, these are in great condition. I'm looking at this one, XJ. Look at this. So this one looks like an inline six, not a V12. I believe that one's a V12. Let's go check it out. I've never seen this many XJs. This one must be a much newer model. I've never seen this many XJs in one place. I've seen maybe like one or two at a at like exotic car or classic car dealerships, but to see them not all rusty in great condition and great shape, uh, it's really cool that there are people that are preserving these cars, you know? Oh yeah, Z3 Clown Shoe, is it an M? Is it an M? Yes, 99 BMW M Coupe. Oh my God, is that a green interior? Dude, that is really rare. This must be an individual car. I've never seen these with a green interior. So Alpine white, green interior. It's got the uh, cool M wheels. Look at that. Got the BMW quad tips, the hatchback. What a unique car. It's funky, I like it. Oh, uh, no way, look at this, right next to it. I almost missed this too. A BMW M Roadster, same generation. So this one's all, all black interior. It's got the factory gauges right there, air conditioning. Oh yeah, this is cool. This must be a, this is also a matching 99. So in 99, it had the S52 engine from the E36, but I believe in 2001, they changed that to the S54 engine 
from the uh, E46 M3. So these are, I don't know what these are going for. You know, back, back in uh, 10 years ago, I think these were like in the 20,000 range. Who knows what they're going for now? Coming up on the Mini Cooper section, or well, the Mini section, because it used to be the Austin Mini. Look at this thing. Super, super tiny. Look at the size of the engine. It's gotta be the smallest engine, or one of the smallest engines I've ever seen. And then you compare it to the newer Mini. This is the, I guess, 03 generation, 01 to 05 generation uh, supercharged. And actually, no, I think these were 03 to 06. Correct me if I'm wrong, but look at this. Look how, look how much larger the engine is. And, you know, I mean, even discounting the, the supercharger that's on the side, you know, this um, intake into the intercooler, which is very, very nice, by the way. Uh, it's a very large engine. Uh, a Peugeot 505 sedan. Look at this guy. So if you don't know, Peugeot is a French brand. And they briefly sold cars in America, but uh, it's kind of short-lived and people didn't really like the cars and they weren't very reliable. But here we have a surviving one from 1987. Look at that, a Peugeot 505. You know, this, this is probably one of the very few Peugeots I've ever seen in person. And look, there's another one. This. I suppose this must be also, this may also be a 505, but it's a station wagon. Here's another French car, this is a Citroen 2CV. And I think this is a Morris. Yes, a Morris Minor Traveler. So a Morris Minor is a you know, small, maybe like a Mini Cooper sized car. But the Traveler has this whole wooden apparatus back here for this, uh, it's a station wagon. Look at that. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Aren't you a bit warm wearing all that? No, I'm fine. It's uh, wearing the kilt, you know, my foot on. Well, with the kilt, you do have plenty of airflow, so that's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, but good. but uh, this looks pretty pretty hefty. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, we got the warm Florida weather. Yeah, I got a state sale. Yeah, hey, you know, gonna have some fun here. Yeah, and I yeah. see you've got the uh, looks like a what kind of animal is that? It's a pig. It's a pig. Yeah. Really, that's a it pig was skull. A, it was delicious. Well, we cooked it. I up. bet it was. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's pretty cool. And uh, what's this here? Yeah, flashy lights, you know, at night. Ah, uh, I see. Mm. No, it's really just a drink holder. So. Oh, there you go. It's a walking stick drink holder. It's a multifunctional device. Yeah. Keeps you out of trouble. I dig it. Cool, man. Yeah, nice to meet you. Good seeing you. All right, so pretty soon, we're going to be heading out to lunch. So I just wanted to get a few more peeps at a couple more cars. I just remember that Bentley is a British brand. They're a European brand. So we got this beautiful Bentley. I'm not sure what this is. It's a, hmm, I'm guessing this is 30s? Look at this thing. You know, pre-World War II. Oh yeah, open top. What is this? Thing? This is a 1927. Okay, I was not too far off. Four and a half liter, four speed. Hmm, look at that. That is cool. That is pretty cool. It is an open tour with spare wheels. Wheels. Wells. These things. Get the spare wheels right here. Extra gas just in case. Maybe some oil. Right on the to the right, I believe this is a Ferrari Mondial. Yes, a Mondial T. I'm not sure what the T is, maybe it means turbo, but we got the gated manual, typical Ferrari stuff. The beautiful Ferrari tan leather covering the entire interior. And it's a convertible. That's not the love. All right, guys, that concludes our visit to the show. We're heading back to the parking lot. The uh, next stop on the rally, we're going out for lunch. Uh, I forgot where we're going, so I'm hoping to catch up with the group pretty soon. Uh, Bob was filming a couple of cars. They uh, they walked off back to the car. I didn't see them, so I didn't catch up. All right, next rally stop. We made it to Seasons 52. We all have reservations, so we're going to hop in and get some food. Tony. You got, a, you got a bit of a sweaty back there. Yeah, no. No AC in the Lotus? No. I have AC, but it's British AC, which means ah. it doesn't work well. Oh, Nada. Just, just like the Miatas. All right, Miguel, time for some food. What do we got? Uh, we need one You got the menu. Ready, bro? Ready for some food? For, for the food. Hell yeah. For the lunch. All right, so dinner's over. Wait, no. All right, so lunch is over. 
lunch. Yeah. Lunch, yeah, lunch is over. So we are, I think most of us are heading home, right? All right, guys, so I think we're going to end the vlog here. Can't really find anything else to do. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out finishlinefactory.com. We've got fittings, hoses. Uh, we've got everything for your fuel system and oil system on your uh, race car. So uh, catch you guys later. See you. Bye.